encore rempli d'étoiles. Hey guys, welcome to Ultra Culture TV. Let's get into it. Hey guys, we are back today with the review of the Clark Sisters, the first ladies of gospel. Yes. Um, if you guys hadn't caught hadn't caught the movie, it came on a couple of nights ago on Lifetime. Um, it was a really good movie. We watched it, and so we wanted to do a review. Yeah, and Lifetime's playing it again for those who missed it. Yes. Okay. So pretty much it's about five sisters who became gospel legends under the tutelage of their overbearing mother. Um, the movie was good as hell. So we're gonna just start. I'm gonna name the sisters. It's Twinkie, Nisi, Dorinda, Karen, and Jackie. Those are the sisters. Okay, so we're about to dive into the story. And so you watched it, friend. It was yeah, good, I did right? watch it. It was very, it was good. very good. Very like have you cry. Mm hmm. So when the um when it first comes on, I knew it was gonna be a mess when it came to the mom, cause she got them kids out of the bed at the wee hours yeah. in the morning to sing, and that was very Joe Jacksonist to me. Yeah. I was like, bitch. She was like, get up. The spirit don't leave me now. You know, and I understand, like, some people just have a goddess to God. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I feel like, in overall, she was right. But, like, you know, you got to get kids some breathing room. Yeah. So, that's how it started off. Um, and then she, um, I also knew she was crazy when she had took her shoe off when they was, um, they was um having the first choir meeting that you see in yeah. the movie, and the girl was chewing the gum, and she threw her damn shoe at her, and so spit that gum out. <laughs> like I knew, I knew Mama was crazy. Back in the day, Mama. I knew Mama was crazy. No, that in church, Mama. Yeah. Church moms be crazy. They don't want you to do no wrong, girl. They crazy. <laughs> um. Um. So then the next scene is um. I knew when she told her husband. You know what I'm saying? I knew when she told her husband she couldn't be there for him when he needed her. It was over for them. Yeah. I didn't think he was going to beat her ass, though. I was like, oh, he beat her ass. I was that like, was wow. Up. I was like, then daddy came downstairs and slapped Twinkie, too, and told her don't, she was never his daughter and don't come back. You know what I'm saying? Leave and don't come back. I was like, damn, daddy beating everybody ass. He was not playing. And the fact that they was in the living room not moving and stuff, I knew. They were shook. Yeah, not only was they shook, this had happened before. before. Yeah. Like, this was a regular, maybe not regular, but it was, this was a common occurrence in, them, mm -hmm. in their home. You know what I'm saying? So I thought that was crazy. What would you think about that scene? That was just crazy to me. And also, um, I might be indulging a little too far ahead. When Twinkie told her mom like she was about to leave. Matter of fact, it wasn't Twinkie. It was the other one. Yeah. It ain't there yet. We coming to that yeah. part. So then after that, um, Jackie had left because she was like, he don't want me here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm leaving. And so her mama showed up at her job the next day and announced that she was having a divorce and that she wanted her to come home. So that's what happened. She's divorced the dad and she came home. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then Jackie got married um, to the guy that was working at her job. She was a yeah. nurse. So she got married to him. And her mom was real sad about it. She gave her money and stuff, but she was real sad about it because she always said that Jackie was her rock. You know, yeah. she was like, you my rock, baby. You know what I'm saying? You my rock, you know? So I really thought that was cool. Um... Then they found out um, that um, the baby, whoever the baby daughter was, I can't remember her name, but that she had a big voice and their music um, was, um, she had a big voice and that their music was how and stories. What, what did I write? They found out <laughs> they had a big voice. Their music was blank and stories. Where you at, boo? Right here. I'm going to cut this out, but I was right here. They found out Baby had a big voice. Their music was... Oh, they found out that the baby of the family had a big voice, and now their music was in stores. It oh, was okay. starting to get played in stores, so people were recognizing them. You know what I mean? Because I'm going to tell you some real. I'm going to tell you some real. The Clark sisters can sing. They can sing. Same. Like, and those were like, they were doing voiceovers. Not really voiceovers, but like they were just like lip singing to their music. These women could sing. If anybody ever been to any mm -hmm. church in the deep south on a hot Sunday, you're yes, sitting there with your fans, the children crying, mom back there going to glory, just, oh, just, 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 just speaking, <laughs> just speaking tongues, you know what I'm saying? You yes. know, you know that them girls, them, them ladies could sing, like, everybody be singing now, but they could sing, you know what I'm saying? Remind me of the Mississippi Mass Choir, yeah. you know what I'm saying? My mama used to love them, the Mississippi Mass Choir, like, it's just, when you hear that good gospel, you can't help but to sit up and pay attention and, like, 
Think about the Lord. Yeah. It's so good. It's so and good. And their biggest hits were Is My Living in Vain. Yeah. Is My Living in Vain. Which Escape had remixed years later. Yep. And if y'all know anything about Escape, that's the first time you probably heard it. Yep. Like, that was the first time I heard it until my mama played it for, for me. And like, she said, no. no. She getting this. <laughs> no. Of course not. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? You getting this from there. You know what I'm saying? So that was a wonderful thing to know that that whole thing derived from gospel music. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, um, after they found out Baby Could Sing and that, um, their, um, albums and stuff was, I mean, their music was in stores was. now and on the radio, um, Mama been slapping people. I mean, she wasn't playing. No, she wasn't. Mama was slapping people. Um, which made me feel like she was no better than her husband. Because, like, you doing the same thing. Yeah, like, you, was you know what I'm saying? Like, you supposed to be a woman of God. Now you walk around here hitting your children. But it do say spread the brow, spread the child. And then was her kids. And then wasn't her, that wasn't her spouse she was hitting. But still, at the same thing, your children been exposed to you getting your ass beat. Now you beating their ass. I thought that was kind of weird. But it made sense to me sometimes. Because we as people, we kind of messed up in the mind. Yeah, and they trickles down to the kids. Yeah, it does. It's, it's a cycle. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? Her girls just wanted to be young. She was very, very like Joe Jackson to me in that aspect. Like, her girls just wanted to go out on dates. Yeah, and her husband even made a statement talking about, what you trying to make them like the Jackson 5? Yeah, they, he, he, like, she, he compared them to them. She said, no, they're going to be better. And yeah. they was because they were singing for the Lord. You know what I mean? And they made a lot of money, you know, singing for the Lord. But I thought that was very interesting how, you know, he compared her and how she really was compared to, you know, Joe Jackson. I thought that was really weird. Um, she didn't want, um, she wouldn't let Jackie in. Like, Jackie came to her house in one of the scenes. And she wouldn't let Jackie in because she had on pants. Yeah, Jackie had to go home and change and put, put on a skirt. Drink and put on a skirt, you know what I'm saying? And she said she was wearing pants and she was probably smoking that weed, too. She said, if you're wearing pants, you're probably smoking that weed, too. I was like, dog, the girl wear pants, you got to be smoking weed. She probably was. In her mama eyes. I think Denise probably was, because Denise was out there. We're going to get to her in a minute. <laughs> okay. So, next. Um, she asked Jackie to take over the group. Mm -hmm. Um, because she, um, the, she had to meet with the board of trustees, probably, yeah. or whatever it was that, the congregation, whatever it was at the, the church, she had to meet church. with them, and they said they didn't, they saw her dancing on TV, mm -hmm. and, and she, they didn't, and they didn't approve of it, and they didn't think it was appropriate, you know what I mean, and they didn't want her to do that anymore and she had to make a choice you know what I'm yeah. saying and then she felt bad about it she was mad like y'all don't want me to be great but it's the same thing that you did to your daughters Yeah, it's the same thing that you did to them which I found to be very appealing I felt like that was the same thing um, so after that re um, Tweaky was writing a lot of songs and then she came home with a Cadillac she done sold all her songs for a Cadillac mama yes, flipped out and called her a child you know what I'm saying? I mean, I understand. Tweaky wanted something for herself. She was like, I'm doing all yeah. this or whatever, and I ain't got nothing to show for you it. You deserve I don't know, something for yourself. I don't know where the money was going. Mama keeping the money. Because <laughs> mama probably was keeping the money. Think mama was keeping mama the probably money. was keeping the money. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and then fast-ass Nisa got pregnant like I thought she would. Yes. I knew she would. When she came in there, she was like, no. They was like, go ahead, Nisa. We about to eat these. Um, they had got chicken from Georgia or something. They was all mm -hmm. excited about it. I was like, this is some fat-ass bitch inside of my chicken bitch. <laughs> but I be excited about chicken bitch. So I was like, you know, she was like, um, I got chicken from Georgia and stuff. And she was like, no, girl, I want to go out. I, I want to dance. See, Nisa a lot like me. I don't like to be home. <laughs> you know, but you know, you know, but she wanted to go out. She wanted yeah, to have fun. Like, I mean, she was a normal young woman, you know, because yeah. they had to be like twenty something at that time. Yeah, and you got to think about it. Like, you ain't never went on no date. You ain't never really got to do nothing because mama was down your damn throat and daddy was down her back. Like, that's a lot. Yeah, all you could do was be home in the house, sing. Mm -hmm. Um, mama was calm when she heard that news though. And she just looked at her and she just straightened up, told her to put on a dress and get on the stage. And she ain't never say shit about it. Next scene you saw, the baby was there at the choir practice. Yeah. And everybody was like, hey, nephew, they loved him. So I, I had respect the mama for that because I thought, if anything, you know, mama's going to flip out by that. Yeah, like, this. like, like you, she slammed the door on the girl by having no pants. But I can have a whole goddamn baby. Well, the sisters was kind of mad, too, though, because she, they just was really getting started. And yeah, then she you go having crazy. a baby. And that happens in a lot of singing groups. groups. Yeah. But they still carried on. Yeah. They still carried on. They still can't push through. They still carried on. And then um the soul um the soul music 
Um, they use soul music to make music. Mm-hmm. So they use a sample from Stevie Wonder, which their mom did not recognize, mm-hmm. and they the um they made a song over one of his um one of his songs. So it was a song, but they just took his words out and used and the medley on. and the beat to make a, a gospel song, which I thought was very smart, very creative, and very um modern. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I thought that was pretty cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, that was kind of cool. Mama yeah, didn't even know what he was talking about. She was like, yeah, y'all can say the song. Um, it made it, <laughs> it to like, radio. Mama didn't even know. Yeah, they was like, Mama didn't even know. Yeah. <laughs> it made it to radio, and that's when you see them on the tour bus, and they're playing on the radio, oh, yeah. and they're like, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Um, they started touring. Um, they got nominated for Best Soul Gospel Performance at the Grammys, and they mm-hmm. performed there. Um... That's when the church fired mom for dancing on TV after yeah. the war show. You know what I'm saying? Um, then they got a contract deal, and Denise went inside. She had three kids by this point. Now, when we started, Denise was, uh, I don't know if she was a virgin, but she was did have the kids when the show came on. Then she had one, which mama accepted. And by this point, she's at her third child. And um, she um, didn't want to sign because she was um, sick of being under her mama's thumb. Like, all of them had to fucking run away from mama because they yeah. were sick of being under her thumb. She didn't want them to do nothing but saying gospel. And I get it. You know what I'm saying? When you so filled with the Lord, when you so filled with the Spirit, that's all you want people to do. You know what I'm saying? But you have to understand that you have to meet people where they yeah. are. Yes. You can't meet people where you are. You have, to yeah. pe- me- you have to meet people where they are. And you got to remember the days when you wasn't saved. Exactly. And you wasn't sanctified. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you got to meet them where they are. You can't say nothing to me because I still cuss. I still go out to the club, blah, 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 because that was you about three years ago. Now you at the front of the church at the pulpit, falling to your knees, thinking, God, I want to be you one day. I'm striving to get there, but it's going to take time. Preach. You know what I'm saying? saying it's going to take Preach. time. It really is. It's just going to take is. time. It we really all gonna is. Get it really is. But she didn't want to sign. She told her mama she gave everybody love except her. She said, mama, you gave everybody love except me. You gave me the leftovers. She said, whatever nobody else did get, you gave me the leftovers. And that wasn't enough. Now, for... That hurt. No, it did hurt. And you can tell children, multiple children, you can't treat them always the same. Like my brother, he was born with health problems, so he got a lot more attention. And, you know, me and my mom had a lot of problems for a lot of years. And you guys know that she just passed away in January, the 30th of January. So, you know, it's still new. But she gave him a lot of attention. She did. And I understood why. Don't think that I didn't understand. I understood why, but I still felt a way about that. And we had a lot of problems until I was about, like, 30. Mm-hmm. 33 before we really start getting along and being able to do mother and daughter things and love each other yeah. like we're supposed to, you know what I'm saying, on some real. Like, it took a while. So I understood where Denise was coming from. Like, that hurt me, and I actually cried during that scene because I was like, damn, I feel that, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, before my mom passed, we had a great relationship, but, like, it took a minute to get there, like, seven years because she died when I was 40. It wasn't 33 until we start being able to get along, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. How about you and your mom? How's y'all relationship? Since we're talking about mother and daughter relationships. Our relationship has always been good. Besides, like, teenage years, of course, your parents are strict on you. You know they don't want you to just do that. I have older brothers, so they always wanted, you know, I always wanted to do what they did. And she was like, no, you're a girl. And I was yeah. like, but, but why? I never understood that until I got older myself and had my own kids. And I tell my daughter, no, no, you can't do that. No, you can't stay out late. You're a girl. It's a difference. It is. So we always been close. We love to shop. Yeah. And I mean, I got to say something about Trina Mama. Like, that my mom. You know what I'm saying? I've known this lady since I was eight years old. I used to live in Connecticut. That's where I'm from. I would come down in the summertime and I would hang out. And I've been doing that ever since I was like, I've probably been doing it for a long time, but I don't remember until I at least was about six. But I remember me, Trina, during the summer of my eighth year coming here. And I remember meeting her and we've been friends ever since. You know what I'm saying? And so her mom, she brought me clothes she took me shopping she, i was her other daughter i stayed the night like her daddy's like god damn when you going home never <laughs> never 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 i live right down the street <laughs> i'm never going like you eating again <laughs> yeah i'm eating again ready right in your fridge ready with a damn sandwich to me that rabbit <laughs> rabbit <laughs> yeah but like right now like and also when you like moved to new york and stuff like when she moved away i moved we moved away a couple of times like she would leave and come back and then i would leave and come back and then she would leave. Like, it, it yeah. just always was like that. But, like, when she was gone, 
I be at her parents' house. She'll call me and like, she'll call why, she'll call your, you her mama. Your mama. I'm at your mama's house. Me and her mama be sitting at the table just like we doing right now drinking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because she raised me and she loved me and I love them. Love them, love them, love them. Like I always say, both of my parents did, but I got two more. Sure. I got two more and I know they love me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So that that's a great thing. But on to the next. So, um, after she got the contract deal, Denise didn't want to sign. She didn't want to say no more shit. I can't blame her. Yeah, I um, then Twinkie met John. Now we in 1989. Twinkie want to leave and John. go with her soon-to-be husband. She don't want to be in the group no more. She wanted something that's just hers. She wanted, she wanted them to be happy for her. I think her sisters were, but of course, Mama made it like it was the end of the world. Yeah. Twinkie more, moved to North Carolina with her husband, who was unemployed. When Twinkie told her Mama she was moving, Twinkie Mama fell on the floor like it was a color purple bitch. Yeah. She had hugged her daughter. <laughs> the nigga had to push her off her. He, she was like, Mama, like this shit was crazy. I was like, did he just push her? Yeah, he just pushed. Her. I was like, bitch, you should be mad as fuck. He just pushed your mama. Oh, she no. I'm not, I'm not leaving you nowhere. Tripping. You just pushed my you mom. You tripping, nigga. <laughs> the fuck? Bro. But that how it went down. That so. how it went down. She left and moved with him. Um, Twinkie said she had to get away from mama. She been, she been running their life forever. She cried she um, like a baby. <laughs> Um, from uh, she she cried like Caesar from the color purple when they tried to take Nettie away from her girl. Yeah. They did. They just needed a mom, not a manager. And yeah. I think if their mom would have been their mother, I don't think they would have been okay. First of all, if their mom if their mom had been their mom and not their manager or their vocal coach, they wouldn't have been the Clark sisters. No, nope. cause Mama had a damn ear on her. Okay, and you wasn't gonna miss a note. Nope. You weren't gonna skip a note. You, you weren't doing it. none of that shit. You was gonna get it. Or mama's gonna beat your ass and throw her shoe at you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I love that. She they would have never been who they were if mama wasn't mama. who she was. You know what I'm saying? So it's some good came out of that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So um I guess the next part is um she ends up in the hospital. All the mm-hmm. girls except for um Twinkie and Denise, they all come. Yeah. They all come, and I knew when they she made them all leave that she was gonna die on the lift. Yeah. I knew that. I was That's like, they always, they don't want you to uh, I just knew they was gonna do it. Um, she passed away, and they flashback. They do some flashback scenes, and um, that blew me away. And no matter what you and Mama go through, you are gonna love your Mama no matter what. At the yeah. end of the day, you are gonna have to face that, and nothing else will matter. In that last moment, when your Mama taking the last breath, she could have burned you with lighter. She could have. Fucking malnutrition you. She could have did face. She could have did any damn thing to you. She could have prostituted you. She could have did anything. But I'm gonna tell you something. People love their mama, regardless. No, you know, mama could do wrong now. We gonna look at it and say, mama fucked up. But we love her. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what it is. Like, I know some people that I know should not love their mama. But they love their mama so much, you can't help it. Because that's the only person you really need acceptance from or approval yep. from is mama. You know what I'm saying? That's so. It. I understood where they was coming from on that shit. Um, so she passed away and all that shit. And then they get to the funeral. Denise was drunk. Yeah, Denise was, oh, Lord. She was up there. <laughs> she was like, me and my seven kids. Mm-hmm. I was like, she said I got seven boys. Your mama and your sister, your aunts don't deal with you, though. I was just like, whoa. They had to seven get, kids. They had, to get her. they had to go get her. Seven kids. No, I can talk. I can talk. I can talk my mama. That my mama. My mama wouldn't want y'all sitting there looking like that. <laughs> <laughs> and we all know some funerals that went down like that. Bro. But hey, let me say something about this. You know, on every video I talk about the coronavirus, just in the funeral things. You can't even have funerals. No. There's no weddings. Did you see the children being born with the damn mask, mask over their me. face? Like, this is the saddest fucking time in life ever. Like, we took for granted. What we had? Yo. How many people have you meted and greeted? You take that shit for granted right now. We can't meet people. We can't reach out to people. We can't hug people. We can't love people. We can't see people. We can't deal with people on a regular basis. And that shit is sad. And, like, I watched my homeboy funeral on live the other day. Mm-hmm. Fucking sad. I couldn't go. Want to go. Would have been there. Under any other circumstances, I would have been there. Yeah. But I couldn't. Because nobody could be there. And like, people were living in the parking lot. Corona and they passed away. There's no next to Ken. 
They're just in a truck. This is awful. It's just so sad, y'all. It but is. back to the Clark sisters. Okay, so after the funeral, <laughs> um, they was the sisters was pissed off at Denise. Yeah. And told her don't get in the car with them. And she was like, Well, if y'all don't want me to be y'all sister no more, if y'all want me to be family no more, then I fucking won't be. And y'all don't have to see me no more. And they didn't see her ass. They probably seen her, but they ain't fuck with her ass no more. The yeah. next scene is where they came on and it was um all performance for yeah, sisters. Performing. Without the niece, of course. And then it tells you what happened to the sisters. So I'm gonna just tell you what happened to the sisters. We're gonna end this video. Yeah. So, um, after the funeral, um, they got back together, um, and then they performed and it showed you what happened to each sister. Karen Clark shirred. Mm-hmm. She over she oversees a powerful um, women's ministry, and she performs both as a solo artist and with her sisters. Um, Jacqueline Clark, Clark Chislam is a nurse, and she's an author, and she continues to perform with her sisters. Yes, she does. DeAndre Clark Cole, um, she's um, Cole and Lick. She's the lady of churches of God in Christ. She preaches and sings the gospel around the world. And then um, you got Twinkie, yep, who composed more than two hundred and fifty songs. Mm-hmm. She inspired the new generations of music um, of musicians, and she's called she's um, dubbed the Queen of the Hammond B three organ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Denise Clark, Clark Bradford is a um, she's a devoted mother. mother, a pastor, and a doctoral candidate. Yes, ma'am. And the legendary Clark sisters are the most celebrated female group in. Gossip movies in history. And they should be. Yes, they should. And if we had to pick a choir, it would be the Mississippi Mass Choir. After this go off, I'm going to listen to the Mississippi Mass Choir. Yeah, and this, <laughs> this movie it. on Lifetime was the most watched movie since 2016. That's because people ain't got a way to go yet. Well, that too. I don't think still, that it was because. It was, they had 2.4 million viewers. Right, because everybody in the house. Yeah. I agree. Like, I feel like this is what it should be, and I feel like this is like a message from God. Like, we got a lot of time on my, our hands. We used to complain about how we couldn't get off to go to work, um, to go to church on Sunday. We used to mm-hmm. talk about how we couldn't go to Bible study on Wednesday, or uh, how we couldn't go to, uh, uh, Bible, um, you know, Bible study on any night of the week. Also, walk around here. Um, worshiping false idols. Not only that, but we act like we didn't have enough time to give to God. Mm-hmm. He gave you all the time. What all you gonna time do with in it? the world now? What Blessings. You do with it? Blessings. Now, we're coming back a little later on this week, maybe in the next three or four days, and we're gonna do an update on all the shows that came on this week before yeah. the new episodes come on. So there'll be probably Love and Hip Hop, Marriage, um, Marriage yeah. Boot Camp, um, Love, um, Real Housewives of Atlanta. The Real Housewives of Potomac is coming yeah, on. Yeah, that's coming on. Um, so there's a lot of shows that we're going to get you guys ca- yeah, um, caught up with. So just stay tuned. And stay tuned to Lifetime because they got a lot of new movies coming out. There's the um, Salt and Pepper Store. Yeah. I can't wait. Girl. Oh, girl, I can't I think wait. I'm going to go buy the jacket. But I feel like, you know what? Jacket. When I saw that shit was coming on, I actually watched the Roxanne Sant- Shantae story on um, Netflix. Netflix. And it's called Roxanne. Please watch Roxanne. Like... I wasn't old. I wasn't young enough. I knew who Roxanne was, but she was like before my time. But I, when I tell you, that was a real story. Like it reminded me of Peter. I know who she was because I had older brothers in the house. Right. And I was little. What eighty four years? I'm, I said eighty four years yeah, old. Yeah, you was. But it was like nineteen eighty four, eighty five. My brothers was like fifteen, sixteen. Then they was playing all that stuff, beatboxing and. Had a um, little um, cardboard, cardboard in the world. <laughs> Y'all, we scoped so it. So I knew all the with songs. It. Kid and Play, EPMD. Girl, all of that shit. Scott LaRock. All that Dela shit. De Soul. All that shit. Trust me, I'm your girl when it comes to that um, R&B and hip-hop. I promise you. Shoot, give me a source um, source book. Them old source books where they had a little questionnaire in the back. I couldn't wait. Couldn't wait because I knew all puzzle. the answers. Yeah. Crossword puzzle. Thank you, Benzino, for doing that because I surely. I kind of missed that. I wouldn't I know none of the answers now. Shit, bitch, ain't one thing to do. We come up with our own magazine. This true, but I ain't know the answers now. Nah, they talk about the new people because I do not know. I don't, I don't know who Lil Uzi Vert. Sada, yeah, I know who that is. But Sada, Sada Baby. Sada Baby. Like, Sada? All these babies, please say the baby. I don't know. Bitch, I ain't got time. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and tell a friend to come and join. Subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell. Ding, ding, ding. Bye, y'all. Bye, guys. <laughs>